Now the next project I'm going to be working on in the Garden Stake range uh, from Merlin Mosaica. This is the medium size and I'll put their website down the bottom of the screen here and also in the description box of this video in case you'd like to go and have a look at their substrates. And we just put a pole in through the center there and that can be used as a garden stake in the garden or even in a flower pot. And I think that they're really quite good. Now, I have already created a video with one of their garden stakes and I'll also put a link in the top of the screen here and also in the, uh, in the description box of this video as well. And that, that will show you how I've actually attached the ball chain uh, because I've made a different garden stake, but I've used ball chain on that too, a little bit um, thinner ball chain or smaller ball chain. I've already adhered this down except for the, the mirror and this emblem here. As you can see, nothing's adhered, only the ball chain. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mix up a batch of epoxy sculpt. That's what I've been using. You can use glue if you want, whatever you'd like to use, but I'm just using epoxy sculpt for such a small project. Now the mirror, I made strips of mirror that I used for another project and then I just cut them up into smaller pieces and I find they work really well for when you want to go around corners and you don't really want to do keystoning because it's so small. I find this works really well. All right, now I'm going to remove the focal piece and then get a piece of sticky tape, which I have here. And I could remove these one at a time and just tip them out or not tip them out, but place them onto the table there. But what I'm thinking about doing is just doing this. Now I'm not sure whether this will work. No, I moved it, but it'll be enough. It'll be all right. So that's removed the bulk of it. And then these ones here can go just at the bottom. And then I'm going to put a piece of this epoxy sculpt on the bottom of this focal piece. Just place it approximately where I want it. Oh, before I do that, I will just roll out a piece of this. I'll just do it on the table because it's actually easier. And then just place that around. And just squash that down a little bit. And then I will start placing these back in. Put that back in here. When they're this small, it's quite fiddly, but I find working with the, using the epoxy sculpt just makes it a lot easier. And I might have to do some adjusting as well, but this has helped definitely having it on the sticky tape. I haven't pushed down the focal piece yet, so I can still move that. I'm just wiping it over to get any residue off the glass and the um, ball chain, anything that I've handled. It's important you get that residue off. Okay, there we go. So I think that's looking really quite good. So now what I'm going to do is choose some, uh, choose some tessera for here. And I'm thinking about doing some flowers using this crockery. I'm not sure yet. And putting those in there. So I might actually just cut this piece out. I'd like a bit of a flatter piece actually. Just cut this flower out quite quickly and see what it looks like. So I'm going to cut up this plate just like I just showed you then and I'll cut a few more and see what it looks like. I might go with it, I may not, but either way this plate will get cut up anyway so I might as well um, use it for this. Alright, so we'll be back in a moment.
or however long it takes me to cut the plate up. <laughs> well, I've cut out all the roses and I think they look quite good. I'm thinking about now using this color here, which is kind of like a purplish blue and putting those in with, uh, putting this color in with the uh, blank areas in here. I think that goes well with the green and also the roses. Right, now to take these out and I'll keep them in their order that I've put them in. I don't think it's gonna matter too much with regards to this piece here, but putting them back in, I mean, but uh, I think if we can keep them in the similar order, then it will go a lot more smoothly. Take out that excess epoxy sculpt. I'm really loving these new tools. They're not too big and they are just coming in so handy. I just love them. Now I'm hoping I'm leaving gaps around the edges here and I'm hoping because I'm looking at doing this uh, in black grout and I'm hoping it's going to highlight all the roses that's why I'm leaving quite a large space of black for the black I should say and I've got the roses going different ways this one here's looking up this one here's looking down that's fine I'm not after them to be identical it's good not to have everything just perfect Of course, it depends on the look you're after. Everyone is just different. Now, if you are using epoxy sculpt, make sure that if you're not going to get to it and use what's in the, for instance, this area here, before it starts to cure, then you need to rip it out. Otherwise, if you forget about it and you come back, it's going to end up like a rock. Now I'm just going to wipe this over with uh, water, a damp rather a damp rag, to clean it up and to get off that residue from epoxy sculpt. We don't want that on there. There you go. I think it's come up really quite well. Now the next stage is to grout it. So I'll wait for this to cure. Oh, I've just knocked off one of the beads there, so or the ball chain. So I'll just stick that back on, and uh, the next step will be then to grout it. So I'll let this cure and then we'll be back tomorrow and grout. Okay, now to grout the hamster hand and I've got my grout here. I'm going to be using Lidicol epoxy grout and I find this is a really great grout and it's waterproof. So if you want to know how I've mixed this up, I have a tutorial which I'll put down in the bottom of the uh, information box of this video and it'll take you to that video. There's a link there. Okay, I'm just going to apply a bit of it on. Wipe it on with my fingers here. I want to make sure I get into all those nooks and crannies, all those holes there, but also making sure that I don't actually block the hole up at the bottom there. I could actually tape off this whole area if I wanted to of the substrate and, uh, and have a nice clean edge on it, but I'm going to be looking at painting it anyway, so I'm not too concerned about it but I just need to make sure that I get it in all those nooks and crannies there and certainly not in that hole at the bottom there. Okay, it's pretty well done. It's pretty quick. 
Now I'm going to go get a wet sponge or damp sponge and then start cleaning this off. All right, I've got my water here and a sponge. I'm going to go in now and clean this up. Take off as much of the grout as you can before you start cleaning because it'll make it easier. But it's very easy to, to clean off anyway, I find. I find working with the Lidl Coal Epoxy Grout works really well. And if you find that um, towards the end, you've got a bit of drag happening with the sponge, uh, then you probably need a bit more water to clean off because water is the key. You don't have to flood the piece, but you do need a reasonable amount of water to actually clean it up. If you've got any areas like that, you can just dig out. So I'm gonna leave that sit, and uh, then we'll come back when it's uh, a, a bit drier, and we'll uh, have another look at it. But I think that's looking really quite good. All right, well, I just wanna check this. Final clean. Don't forget to check the back, although this has got some uh, of the plastic on the back, so I'll be removing that later. Don't need to move it now. Have a good thorough look around. Now's the time to get the grout out of anything that shouldn't be there, or the grout shouldn't be there. I'm really happy with that. So what I'm going to do is leave this now until it fully cures, and then we'll come back and put the stake in the bottom and see what it looks like. But I'm really happy with it. Well, I think the hamster hand's looking really good, very shiny, and I love the uh, bling of the mirror in there. I think it looks really good. Now, I've painted the sides and also the back, and if you're going to be painting uh, on PVC, you, you'll need to use a primer first. If you just use an ordinary paint, it will scratch off, and that's exactly what I've used. I've used a good quality outdoor paint. Uh, it's just an acrylic paint. I know it's going to scratch off. Uh, if, it, uh, if I got something to scratch it off, it would. However, it's just for me. Uh, if I was going to be selling these or anything like that, I'd definitely want to use a primer on the, uh, on the back there to make sure that that really does grip into the PVC before I apply a final coat. Now, for the uh, hole here, I'm going to fill this up with an adhesive. And before I do that, while well, it's a silicon top of adhesive, I'm just going to get a piece of this tape. It's just masking tape or painter's tape and put over the hole because it could get a little messy, I don't expect it to, but just in case, silicon and I don't get along all that well in some cases, so I'm just taking a precaution here. I'm going to get the stake and just find the hole and just push that in. And it doesn't matter if a piece of the masking tape does go into the hole, it's not gonna make any difference to it. And I've got the adhesive here, just in a syringe, because this will make it easier to apply. The syringe will fit into the hole. So by putting it in there, it fits quite well. See, it stands up on its own. And all I'm going to do is just push in a small amount. And unfortunately, I have to gauge it. It's about all I need. And then I'm going to get the stake and push that in there and swirl it around. Because if I get adhesive on the outside, it is going to change the look of the paint. So uh, I'm going to now keep this upright, and I mean, I may not need to, but that's my choice. And uh, then I'll come back later and take that tape off, and then once I've done that, uh, we'll come back and have a look at the final product. Well, another garden stake's completed, and I think it's turned out really good. I haven't made a hamster hand before, so I thought I'd take this opportunity to make this one and uh, make it as a garden stake. Now, as I've said earlier, the design on these can be as simple or as complex as what you would like them to be, which I think lends itself to really uh, creating these and either using them for uh, presents or for selling at markets because you can do really simple designs in a very, very short space of time. And I think that they would probably sell quite well at markets. Now, this is the third one that I've done and the final one. And like I say, I had a lot of fun creating these. So anyway, I hope you've taken something away from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, put them down in the bottom of the comments section. Let me know which one you really like, which one you prefer. And uh, if you saw value in the video, please share it far and wide. If you uh, liked it, please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed, think about subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy. Enjoy.